Hey everybody, so in this video we're going to define a couple of terms. Uh, we're going to look at ions, valence states, and oxidation states. So when we talk about ions, these are atoms that have a charge. So let's say we have the atom silica. It's very rare in nature that it would have a neutral charge, that it would have the same number of protons as electrons. Instead, it's very typical for silicon to have a plus four charge. So anything with a plus four charge, we would refer to as a cation. So here we refer to this as a cation, a cation of silica. Now silica has 14 protons in its nucleus. So to get a plus four charge, that means it has to lose four electrons. It would have 14 electrons here in the neutral state. Uh, and then if we strip away four of those 14 electrons, leaving it with just 10 electrons, then we'd have the four plus state, allowing it to be then a cation, as we've discussed. And then there are elements that can take on electrons, like oxygen. So again, oxygen is very rarely ever in the neutral state. Uh, oxygen has eight protons in its nucleus, as we've discussed in other videos. Uh, it has to be eight, otherwise it's not oxygen, just like silicon has to have 14 protons, otherwise it's not silicon. But the number of electrons is variable, and if uh, an oxygen atom has eight electrons, then it will be neutral, but usually only it, it has 10 electrons, giving it a two minus charge. And anything with a negative charge is referred to as an anion. So a cation um, is anything, any atom with a positive charge, and an anion is anything with a negative charge. Right. And so we've just given two examples, but there are many others. So for example, uh, sodium is commonly in the one plus state. That would be a cation. Right. And then fluorine, very commonly in the, uh, with a minus one charge. So that qualifies as an anion. Now, we have other ways of talking about the very same thing. This term valence is very common. Uh, we talk about so-called valence states or valence electrons. The valence electrons, I'll just write an E minus for electrons. Uh, these are the electrons that are in the outermost shells that are available for bonding. available for bonding. And um, if we come back to our example of silicon, four plus, uh, when it was in the neutral state, it had four electrons that are available for bonding. How does it acquire this four plus state? Uh, it's going to bond with let's say two oxygens, remember oxygen commonly has a two minus charge. So if we have two oxygens, that's those two oxygens in total are willing to grab up four electrons and they're happy to take them from silicon. And so we can have this unit here, quartz, and that would be neutral. So the valence electrons then for oxygen and silicon are the two additional electrons here in oxygen and those four electrons that are being uh, shared with oxygen on the silicon side to create this neutral compound SiO2, otherwise known as the mineral quartz. So we could talk about this four plus as being the valence state, and then we could talk about oxygen two minus. The two minus charge is the valence state of oxygen. Now, another aspect of this uh, valence uh, um, stuff is that in geology we often talk about oxidation state. So this is just the last term that we'll discuss here in this video. The oxidation states of elements uh, are again they're really kind of synonymous with what we refer to as uh, the valence state. Uh, the reason we talk about oxida oxidation states is that oxygen is the single most abundant atom in the entire Earth. It's more abundant than silicon. It's more abundant than iron. 
Well, it might not be more abundant than iron, uh, but they're going to be pretty close in abundance. Um, there might not be enough oxygen in Earth to, for example, oxidize all of Earth's core. Uh, but in any case, in Earth's crust and mantle, oxygen definitely is the most abundant element, and it's the most abundant anion. And so because of that abundance of all the other kinds of anions that are moving about and that cations can bond with, oxygen is the most likely one to be grabbing up electrons. Now, silicon can lose those four electrons to other kinds of compounds, but more than likely it's going to bump into an oxygen atom, and so it's oxygen that's going to be grabbing up those four electrons from silicon. So we talk about oxidation states, and the oxidation state of silicon, in other words, the number of electrons that oxygen can pull away from silicon would be four. But there are elements uh, like iron that have multiple oxidation states. So iron can be two plus, or it can be three plus. And so when we talk about oxidation states, it's usually in reference to these kinds of elements that have multiple oxidation states, because that's where it becomes really interesting. So silicon is always uh, four plus. There's really not a lot to discuss in terms of its environment. We almost always find it in the four plus state. Uh, there are some rare cases when you can find it a little bit more reduced. But with oxygen and Earth's crust, we can find it in either one of these two states. Even in the same mineral, it can be in both of these states, both the 2 plus and 3 plus, occupying different sites in a crystal structure and satisfying different charge balance requirements in different parts of the crystalline structure. And so there it becomes really important to know whether or not iron is acting um, in a way that it's giving away two electrons or three and so we talk about these so-called oxidation states because, in a sense, they're really telling us how much oxid oxygen is around. If there's a lot of oxygen around, then most iron is going to be 3 plus. Whereas if there's not very much oxygen around, it's going to be 2 plus. If there's no oxygen around, then oxygen can have a neutral state. So for metallic iron, we would have iron just bonded itself to itself with no net charge. So uh, in these kinds of elements, and iron is just uh, one of the more prominent examples, we have var varying valence states, otherwise in geology, typically known as oxidation states.